In the first round of the simulation, you must manage the price of all six of your products and make a decision about your marketing investment strategy. You can adjust both of these at any point during the simulation. To make your decision, you will need to know how to operate the corresponding transactions in SAP and will need information on which to base those decisions. Let's now turn to the SAP system to learn how to run the relevant reports and operational transactions. As we start to explore the system, don't be concerned that you will forget the steps to complete any operation. You've been provided with a single page job aid to assist you. The job aid is mapped to an overview of the business process and color coded to give you the context to find what you're looking for. If you haven't already done so, obtain the job aid and keep it near you so you can orient yourself between it and the system as we go. This will make it easier for you to find what you need later on. By the end of this video, we will have seen and discussed all the transactions on the job aid. We will explore the relevance of each of these in their context in the business cycle as we need to. Look at your job aid. The transactions for round one can all be found to the right in the area marked sales process. Each time a simulation event is run, an SAP environment is assigned for that event, and each team of participants is assigned one of the 26 companies available. Within those teams, each person is assigned a unique user account with associated username and password. This information is vital, as without access to the environment, you cannot participate. The general format of these is also documented on the job aid, as a reminder. In the context of the distribution sim, the general form of the username is as you see it before you and as it appears on the job aid. You must substitute the dollar sign for your team letter, in our example, A, and the pound key for your user number, in our example, 3. The password for each event is also on the job aid, and it is case sensitive. You must type it exactly as it appears. The SAP server and client will also be assigned to you. There is nothing to substitute here. You simply use these as provided. For the purpose of this training, we will demonstrate everything as though you were assigned Team A, User 1, using Client 300. Keep in mind that when it comes time for you to practice, or more importantly, if you have already been assigned a practice environment, you must substitute Team Letter A and User 1 with those that you have actually been assigned and use the SAP server and client assigned to you. Time to get hands-on. Let's log in. First, we start the SAP application. Select the correct server and click on Login. At the main login page, you must enter the details of the user account and environment that you have been assigned. In addition to selecting the SAP server that we will use, SAP uses a concept called a client, which is a virtual partitioning of one server into independent environments. Each simulation uses a specific SAP client. We can run multiple simulations by using different clients instead of needing to have many SAP servers. Enter the client, your username, and password. Remember, if you have a practice environment and are following along while you watch this video, don't copy the examples you see here. Use the team, user, and SAP environment that you have been assigned. At first login, you may be prompted to change the default password with a permanent one. In that case, select something carefully and write it down. If you forget it, you will not be able to log in again in the future. Once you've confirmed the password, it will be permanent and you are now connected to SAP. While unfamiliar to most people the first time they use it, the SAP interface is not difficult to learn. There are some key basic skills to learn, and the rest from there becomes easy with little practice. Let us learn about the first two we have just seen. In SAP, when you want to confirm something, click on Enter or Confirm. This can appear in two forms, depending on the context. This first icon we use to confirm our login details. The second icon we use to confirm the new password. Whenever you see either of these icons, clicking it will confirm your action or proceed to the next step. These are synonymous with hitting the Enter key. If we did not want to confirm our action and cancellation is possible, we would see a third icon. This icon is used to cancel an action we no longer want to perform. We will now spend some time getting comfortable with the SAP interface. Gaining confidence in this area quickly is important, as we want to be focusing on the business decisions we are going to make not fumbling around trying to remember where everything is. There are two basic ways to get started in SAP. Both approaches accomplish an action referred to as running a transaction. A transaction is simply an operation or report that we would like to use or look at. We can run transactions from the user menu or using its transaction code, 
also known as its technical name. For new users, the user menu is the easiest way to find and run a transaction. The SAP menu contains a set of transactions that the user has access to, typically grouped together in folders by purpose, business context, or some other classification. We've grouped the transactions together in the order that you will learn them to make each one easier to find. Let's begin by first running a simple report. We know that we will begin the simulation with starting inventory of finished products. As you sell off this inventory, you'll want to monitor how much you still have left. We can run the inventory report to give us this information. Drill down into the menu, find the inventory report, and double click on it to run it. Notice that to expand, or drill down into the folders in the menu, we clicked on the small triangle icon. Wherever you see this icon, you can click on it to see more detail or child items. To hide or collapse that detail, simply click on the item again. The inventory report contains the list of all your products and how many units you currently have left in stock. In SAP terminology, your products are referred to as materials and referenced by a material code. There is also a description of the product so you can tell which one it is. The material code is prefixed with your team letter, repeated twice. This report also has information about your warehouse storage capacity and total inventory. Since there's no warehousing cost in the distribution sim, you can ignore this part of the report. In SAP, reports are always up to date when you first run them. But once run, they do not update automatically. Most of the reports have a refresh button. Whenever you see this icon, click on it to request for the data in the report to be refreshed. Of course, this will only have an effect when the simulation is actually running. When the simulation is paused, time is effectively standing still. On most of the reports, the report heading will also show you how old the information is. Basically, when the report was last run. This is reported in terms of how the simulation measures time. It's also a useful way to track what date it is in the simulation. Refresh a report and you will immediately see what the current simulation date is. Note that the simulation reports time in quarters and days. A quarter is synonymous with one round of the sim. Refer back to your job aid. Find the box marked stock levels. Inside it, you will see inventory report, followed by the characters ZMB52. ZMB52 is the technical name for the inventory report. There are no steps to complete to run the inventory report, so the information on the job aid is a reminder of the purpose or information content of the report. There is another report that we will find very useful during the first round of simulation, the summary sales report. With the help of the job aid, we discover that its technical name is ZVC2. The technical name can also be used to run a transaction. On the SAP toolbar, to the right of the Enter icon, is a drop-down control. You can type the technical name into this space and click on the Enter icon to run the relevant transaction. Despite the ease with which we can run a transaction if we know the technical name, SAP will not allow you to run a new transaction while you still have another open. We must first return to the user menu before running another transaction. The summary sales report contains a day-by-day, product-level summary of the sales orders you have received from your customers, specifically the number of separate orders you've received, the total units ordered, and revenue value. Since the simulation has not yet started, there are no orders yet. Once the round begins, you will need to check this report often to monitor sales activity. There are two other sales reports. Can you find them on your job aid? You are free to explore these during the first round of the simulation, but we will discuss the information available in each of these after the first round is complete. Their use will be more transparent once we've received some orders and there is data to be seen. Note that the green back icon was used to return to the user menu the first time, but the yellow exit icon was used the second time. There's also a third red cancel icon grouped with these two. The behavior of these icons varies from transaction to transaction, but in general, the simpler the transaction, the more likely two of the icons will have the same function. In general, use the green back icon to go back to the previous screen in a transaction. Use the yellow exit icon to exit the transaction and return to the user menu. When you are at the user menu, this icon is also used to exit or log out of the SAP system. Finally, use the red icon to cancel what you were doing in a transaction. This is more common in response to a system error message. 
Perhaps you want to go into another transaction without closing the current one? You can open a new session by clicking on the Open New Session button. You're able to use up to six transactions at a time, which can be useful in many situations. These are general guidelines for when to use these icons, but be aware that they are the icons with the most inconsistent behavior from transaction to transaction in the SAP system. Don't worry, you'll quickly learn the handful of transactions with specific behaviors outside the general guidelines. Now that we've learned how to run reports to get information, we have a basis by which we can make decisions. Now we need to learn how to commit those decisions to SAP so that the simulation will act upon them. In the first round, there are two decisions you need to constantly revisit, your sales price and your daily marketing expenditure. Let's explore where these are in the SAP system and how we can change them. By referring to the job aid, we can determine that condition maintenance is the transaction we need to change prices. When you run this, you will see a screen quite different from those seen so far. The job aid tells us that the first step we must do is expand the prices folder and then find and execute the price list item. The screen we are presented is of a format very common to many SAP transactions. It is called a selection screen. Its purpose is to allow you to focus your attention on a specific subset of items rather than on everything available in the system. Many of the options have been set to default values to make your job easier. Step two of the job aid instructs us to enter a value of 14 for the distribution channel. We can optionally enter a material code also if we want to change the price for just one material. If there's no mention of any of these other fields, leave these alone. Step four instructs us to then click on the execute icon. You are now presented with a list of materials and their associated prices in distribution channel 14. Recall that distribution channel 14 contains small corner store type customers. To revise your price, you simply click and modify the value in the relevant cell. There is one important final step to complete the price revision. You must save your changes or you have changed nothing. For decision making transactions, there are two important icons the execute icon and the save icon. The execute icon is used as the final step to perform processing in SAP. If the operation is automated or there is no option for review, then this is also the final save. Where you must enter or modify information or are given an opportunity to review, you must use the save icon to commit your changes. After you click save, a system status message will inform you if the operation was successful green if it was successful, yellow for successful but a warning or caution is given, and red for failure. Our final decision transaction for this round is marketing expenditure. This transaction is used to set the daily budget for marketing. The simulation automates the actual expenditure based on what you currently have set. Enter the amount for each material in each region that you allocate as the daily marketing budget. Click on the save icon to commit your decision to the system. To revise your plan, enter new values or overwrite the old ones. Always remember to save your changes. If you want to stop spending anything on marketing or make drastic changes, you can click on the clear button to remove all values. Clear does not save. You must click on save or enter new values and click on save to commit your decision. Recall that marketing is by region as well as by specific product. The influence on the customer is persuasive from one product to another. If you market multiple products in the same region, not only will they compete against the competition's offering for brand space, but also against each other. Keep this in mind. Carpet bombing is a low yield, high cost marketing strategy. As an overall guideline, recall that the expected daily sales revenue for each team is 6,000 euros. Your total marketing spending should be in line with this. 10% of sales would be a fairly aggressive marketing budget. 10% would correspond to 600 euros per day across all 18 product and region combinations. Let's recap our situation. We have six products which come in two sizes, one liter and a half liter. These products come in three flavors, clear pure, which is plain water, spritz, carbonated water, and lemon spritz, carbonated water with a hint of lemon flavoring. Large bottles are sold in boxes of 12 
and small bottles sold in boxes of 24. Your supplier prices are fixed and your initial pricing is set to give you a gross margin of 3 euros per box. You begin the simulation with starting inventory of all six products. The following table contains the relevant data. At this point, we will start the simulator and you are free to use the system and take action as you see fit. As the simulation runs through the first few days, you should start to see sales orders coming in and your inventory reducing. Revisit your pricing and marketing decisions often, but in small adjustments to fine-tune your sales rate. 